get your prizes, ladies. I exhort you to be back. Our next panel has already taken their seats. More prizes tomorrow. More prizes tomorrow. Let them save this up for. All right, ladies. The next panel has already taken their seats. Since today is all about opportunities and networking and making your passion. She's an author, columnist, educator, and the voice of Mommy Go Lightly, India's most loved parenting blog. How many of you follow that blog? Mommy Go Lightly. Great. So there you are. I leave it up to the panel to continue the discussion on how to make your passion your paycheck. Thank you. Uh, I think the first thing I was thinking about when I saw this in the uh, schedule as our topic for discussion, how to make your passion your paycheck, was whether I was qualified to be on this panel. And then I thought to myself, uh, yes, about, it, it, I mean, it's been a while since I can unflinchingly write uh, on a form, whether it's for a visa or a child admission, what my occupation is. And I, I'm not afraid to say I'm a writer. So I think, I think I've reached that point where I sort of converted my passion into my paycheck. But it, it, it was like a rather long, convoluted, route to get here. So uh, I'm sitting here with an actress par excellence and uh, a filmmaker and I just want to know whether they have, um, you know, what kind of journeys they've had in terms of actually begin to define their passion as their profession and what is the, what is the thin line that separates the two. Uh, so I will first ask, I'll first ask Rajeshree. Uh, who's a filmmaker? Um, do you do you unflinchingly write filmmaker on a visa form, or at what point did you start doing that? Uh, good afternoon, all. I hope you all can hear us. Uh, there's a lot of echo. Uh, going by your question, uh, Lalita. Yeah. Um, I do. I actually do. If there is a filmmaker bracket, then we will. I mean, I try to find it somewhere, but mostly it's always media person or in the arts. So most of the time, that's the way, you know, to kind of, that's what, art, I mean, in our field, that's what happens. So I think um, going what you just said, I think that's where we are. And I think when you uh, sort of, uh, when you're growing up, there are different things that one is really passionate about and perhaps pursues, and it could be dance, music, acting, uh, writing and whatever and at some point I think when you're closer to the board exams or you know your 10th or your 12th you are forced to put yourself into little boxes um, you know and actually they're not little boxes they are really big boxes like arts science and commerce and you either fit into any of these or you just you just uh, you know are answerable to your parents about what you want to do in life and uh, I think most of us sort of get into these boxes rather reluctantly at some point and then if you really keep at it you are at some point able to get out of the boxes and actually pursue what where your heart really lies and uh, for some it takes long for some it's it happens rather quickly for some perhaps it never happens and uh, so I wanted to ask Konkana was this part of your plan was was acting always part of your box there was no box as far as I was concerned. There was no plan either. So I'm really not sure that I'm the right person to be sitting up here 
uh, talking about making your passion your paycheck. Um, I honestly thought it was much more about working mothers and you know mothers in the workforce. So that also we can get to later. But um, my journey has been a convoluted one. I didn't know what I wanted to do to begin with when I was in college. And acting is something that I happened to um, stray into and then you know made it my world. It was already my world because of my parents etc. Uh, and then I made it my world. Um, I feel that um, you know, it's, it's, it's a complex thing making a passion your paycheck because you may be very passionate about something but you may not be very good at it. I mean, that's also that's something that has to be addressed. Yes. yes. Right? I mean, not everyone is great at what they love doing. It's great. There are very few people who are very lucky who love what they do. Uh, I think uh, it's always, uh, it's a different thing. It's a talent plus passion. It has to be both or you have to have some kind of a drive to go for your uh, passion. You don't, you can't just say I'm, I'm passionate and you may not be the best writer or you may not be a great artist, but you have passion in when you may not have the talent. So I think uh, uh, it comes with talent, it comes with, you know, it, it's, it's both. It's a and combination of both. And I think the magic both. formula of really working hard at your passion yeah, and being able I mean, to... I think hard work though is a guarantee, exactly. a guarantee part of life. You want to succeed in anything, hard work is the most important thing. Uh, you know, as they say, 99% you know, is perspiration and 1% is inspiration. Aspiration, yeah. Inspiration. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I would just, yeah, so I think that, you know, it's the most important thing, regardless of what you do, is to not have these delusions, you know. You should know what you're good at. I think it's important to know yourself, it's important to know what your goals are. You know, are you, is your goal to be financially independent? You know, because you have to work accordingly. You may have a passion, you may try it out, you may give yourself a certain time and then you may move on to other things or something around that field or try and hone yourself in such a way so that you can be better at that field. Uh, and I think one of the most important goals for women is definitely financial independence. I agree with Kokana about this. Um, I think, uh, you know, it's very easy to say I'm passionate about writing or I'm passionate about making films, but it's not easy. It does not give you paycheck right away. It does not, you know, run you. It does not give you financial independence right away. So you have to do something other than that, you know, to uh, continue with your passion. That's my. Um, see, when I was in, in the states, it's very difficult. I mean, I knew what I wanted to do from right on. <laughs> I knew I wanted to be a filmmaker, and I studied and I worked at it. In the states, you have to do something else because I don't have a millionaire father there who's given me a house in Beverly Hills. I have to work and I have to work in that industry and keep doing what I want to do. That is to make a not direct. It was a little long journey so I ran and came back to Bombay. But that's the whole thing for a lot of uh, women here who want to, you know, go into this kind of, uh, uh, you know, passion journey. You have to keep that, you know, where is that money coming for the rent and where is the money coming for the, you know, next electricity bill. So you have to keep um, a balance between both of the worlds, you know. Passion is, um, keep at it, don't let it go, but, you know, keep working with, with work within the industry. I know writers who are working in the, in a studio to kind of make the ends meet, but they continue writing, they continue writing their scripts and they continue writing, you know, going and meeting directors and, you know, that's how I think uh, is the way to go uh, There's also this issue, uh, particularly for women, of uh, uh, being able to be relevant um, through their life changes. I mean, um, you know, through marriage, through motherhood, and uh, very often it happens that uh, one or both of these uh, tends to derail them to some extent, um, and uh, there is... Uh, there is often a struggle to get back to the ramp, so to speak. And uh, there, there are issues also like post-motherhood uh, for a lot of women, at least in India, of being shafted uh, at the workplace, um, you know. So there is this sort of dilution of their identity that happens and there's this, um, you know, there's this conflict and a lot of angst. And uh, uh, so I just wanted to know how um, you know, how relevant is it for, uh, in all professions, uh, you know, this kind of uh, struggle? So, can you just talk about that, Konkana? 
Well, I think that, you know, we all have different identities and we don't have just one identity, right? I mean, we, uh, we have so many different identities that we, that collate to form, you know, our personality or who we are as a human being. That's how I feel. So we have our own, uh, you know, um, you know, the, uh, my many identities are I'm an Indian, I'm a woman, I'm a mother, I'm an actor, um, I may or may not be religious, whatever it is, we all have these different identities, right? And I feel that um, that there is so much pressure on us uh, from, especially when we have kids. You know, I read a very interesting article uh, about women who were in the IITs and IIMs in the 1980s and where they are today. So they're as qualified as the men, but they did this um, follow-up for these women and they found that most of them had, um, you know, they had children in there by the time they were in the 30s, most of them had children and they had to switch. So most of them either were running their own business from home or they had set up something else on their own, whereas the men who had, uh, you know, um, studied there were flourishing in that particular line in their business. They didn't have to actually, they didn't get derailed, as you said. Um, of course, the first thing to identify is whether you want to work or not, because of course that is a choice and you're free to exercise that choice. A lot of people don't have that choice, a lot of women have to work, they may not have the luxury of that choice. And I think it is important to work because I think that, you know, that identity of being a working woman, of being financially independent, I think that is a very important part of our identity. Uh, not only for our own self-esteem, but also uh, how other people relate to us. Um, I feel really proud that I uh, am, you know, a working mother to my son. I think it's really important for my son to see a strong, independent working woman like I saw my mother, you know. I just, yeah, I actually, I think I read something yesterday which um, a friend from a corporate um, setup or, a, you know, um, in my field, I can only speak about my field, because well, this is what I have um, even I'm sure you guys will speak. Um, there, there is no, there is discrimination everywhere. It starts at in the house. It's not in the field, really. Per se, it's in the house. You know, you're discriminated in your house. Girl, you're a girl, so you do the dishes. No, it's always like that. You know. So um, I think in the in my field, it is a little bit. It's it's difficult for any filmmaker. Period. It's man or a woman. It's difficult to make a film. But yes, as a woman film makers, as women filmmakers, all of us, have a certain tendency to tell women-oriented stories. At least I do. Um, I like my main protagonist to be a woman because I identify with her. So it, it was about, say, six, seven years ago, it was difficult because there were filmmakers, there were producers who we would go to and they'd say, what? How can this happen? This will So, you know, you ca I've heard things like, Okay, so that was the perception. Of course, things take time to change. I think it does not happen overnight. Nothing happens overnight. Look at it. Now, you know, there are women, um, you know, uh, women kind of, like women are the heroes. There are a lot of films that are coming out. And I think uh, those things will, you know, in, in, the, in the personal spaces also that will happen as time goes on, as you said. Working mothers give, a, you know, give um, their individual, the, uh, daughters are more um, well, independent and the sons are more um, understanding. So I think it comes that, you know, now as the generations are coming, the women are working, they are doing uh, more things, like just not sitting at home. So I think it's all changing. Should be through this one. Would anybody like to ask? I mean, I, I want more more of you to participate in this. So, would, yeah, the lady in the white jacket. followed by HR from the US, uh, but I'm still not happy with what I'm doing. I enjoy my work, I want to work, again, I have two daughters now, uh, but uh, passion is what you're talking about. What is passion? How would I identify that? I'm still struggling. I'm HR, I'm psychology, so I've done a lot of tests, I've gone through a lot of shrinks, reads, 
everything but what is passion Hello. Okay. So here goes. I did my computer. I did undergrad in computer science, but I knew I wanted to do film, so I continued working. I went. This is my my definition of passion. I knew that my parents would not allow me to go to America with film. So what the hell? So they sent me. I said I pretended to do computer science. I did my undergrad in computer science, but did my. Um, I did a there's a thing called a minor in America. I did theater as my minor. I continued doing film courses, and then I went on to do my masters. I got into one of the prestigious schools, and I said, now I'm getting uh, even uh, some uh, scholarship. You have to let me go. So they saw the journey that I wanted to do this. Though I have a, I said I have computer science. I can do a computer science job, but that is the. I think that's the. The thing in your stomach is that this is what I want to do. Yes, I have to sustain myself, but I want to continue. I think that's passion for me. I think it's so sweet that you're asking this question. I had the same problem when I was about, you know, 18, because I, and I some I, I not it started then, and it's only now that I feel passionate about something because I've not been very passionate a kind of person anyway. That's okay, but the thing is, the most important thing is to know yourself, na. No? If you don't know yourself and you don't know what your priorities are and what makes you happy, then how will you shape your life accordingly? Then you're only waiting for external stimuli. If you can identify a few things, oh, if you can identify a few things that give you pleasure, that are in your control, some of it at least, not all of it is, you know, most of it is not. Then, and follow that. I, like I was saying earlier, I'm not ideal on this panel because I was never passionate about acting. I never really wanted to become an actor. But today, I'm passionate about wanting to make a film. And I know this because it's. I've been at the same thing for almost two years. I was never a writer. I've written a script. You know, it's for me, it's a major achievement. For other people, it, it's minor. It's just that I never thought I would stick with one thing for so long. So the best is to get to know yourself really well, and it's not easy. It's not. I'm from advertising, I never want. I never knew what advertising was. So I'm a science graduate. I just you keep stumbling in life, you keep falling, and then you realize, okay, your work can eventually become your passion. That's. Yeah, I think what you're saying is absolutely relevant because it's, um, you know, if 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 there's something that you um, want to really work at to get better and better and be, you know, at least aspire to be the best in what you do, that is passion. I mean, it can't come without passion. So it does not matter. Hard, or, you can hear me, right? A hard work can lead to a lot of self-discovery. You know, and through that you can discover your passion. Um, you know, like what it is you care about, how far you can push yourself, what your priorities are. I think it's only in terms of adversity that you actually get to know, you know, what is important and what is not, and that your true character comes out. I think there's this um, really interesting book about mindsets. If someone has read it, um, it's by this uh, Stanford professor called. Carol Dweck, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, she talks about how people largely are of two types: the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. The fixed mindset person believes that, uh, you know, say somebody is a great dancer, she thinks that, oh my God, blah. The other person who is not, I mean, who is not the, you know, so-called um, one percentile of the curve, where you know. are born ultimately gifted or exceptionally uh, talented or whatever but have the ability and the will and the consistency of purpose to sort of take it all the way and to really excel in what they are doing and i think they are the ones who actually make it in the long run and they are able to sustain that passion or convert what they are doing into into something that really is you know top of the line or really sustainable Uh hello uh, two more questions and uh, we'll call it today uh 
this question is related to thinking, what if I like to do four to five things? Like, you know, I like to sing, I like to dance, I like to cook, I like to design. So, there are many such women, men, you know, who have too yeah. many things and they I, get I bored also. I know, I know that feeling because I yeah. feel exactly the same way. Yeah. I want to do five things and, and I want to do all of them and I don't want to. But I think you, you realize um, that there, there will always be one thing that you will go to any lengths to, to be able to do. There will always be that one thing which no matter what happens, you will do that. Okay? And uh, it could be anything. But uh, then you will realize that that is what is something that you really want to hold on to. I mean, we are all good at multiple things. And as women, I think we are all excellent multitaskers. And uh, we may do several things really well. But there will always be one thing you will fight to do. And that's what you should yeah. You can also channelize your, your, all your passion into one one mode. So you can always, you know, take the painting, the dancing and the singing into one channel and for all you know, it will be, a, you know, a film. The most important thing is that you, uh, you feel the need to creatively express yourself, it seems, since you have described uh, not things like science or, uh, you know, art, well, you've described uh, dancing, singing, photography. Design, design. Last, last question. Last question, please. Okay, uh, even I am interested into acting and uh, seeing people struggle at auditions right now. At like, uh, so being just 18 years old, there are so many confusions in your mind that you don't know where it leads you to. Like, you're not even sure if you'll get into acting or not. So, how do you deal with such confusions and unsurety? First of all, as Gokura said earlier, find your path or find that one thing that you, she was telling, you know, what do you want? So once you find that, the, the auditions and all will be a piece of cake. So you have to find one, whether you want to be an actor or you want to be something else. It, you have to find that from what do you want is what uh, you have to question yourself, no? No, I like, uh, I'm pretty sure that I want to get into it, but then giving so many auditions in a day and then uh, I have done an advertisement, but I've seen friends who, they are nothing and then they feel so over, like, uh, can, I, can I tell you a motivational story? Yeah. Okay, so when I was, when I just, uh, when I was working in a magazine um, as an assistant editor, um, there was a, a girl who was interning with me. Okay. She was just out of college in Sophia's and um, like many uh, people of that generation or even, I mean, even much older people, she was confused about what she really wanted to do. She was a good journalist. She was very good at what she did. She really um, took charge of things. She was, she was a great asset to the company and uh, she was there with me for about a year and I, I think one day when we were having tea at the staircase, she told me, you know what, I want to be an actor. And, uh, and she said, I, I need to run now because uh, uh, I said, you know what, run. But you, you may need to run for a long time before you actually make it happen for you. It will be a very long, arduous journey. But at the end of it, if you really want that, it will be worth it and you will make it happen. She got her first break six years later after doing theatre, workshops, um, you know, with various intense, um, you know, theatre programs, uh, you know, body work, improv, lots of things. But she made it happen. Okay? Today she's doing really well. Her name is Richa Chadda. And I'm very proud of her. Thank you so much. Thank you. One last point. Please watch page three. Thank you very, very much, our esteemed panelists. Um, so the ladies really are asking, how do I know that this is what I was born to do? So wait a few minutes. Our next panel address is just that. And uh, meanwhile, I have to say thank you. And
Yeah, Ching, ask one question that I'll make a move. My God. Who's coming? Uh, what floor are we on? This on the first floor. First floor. So somebody has to come with yeah, me. Yeah, I'll come. Okay. Okay, don't ask. Where is the connection to that? 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 देखिए मैं एक चीज़ ही बोलूँगी, which is that it's I think it's very important for women to have financial independence. I think women have many many identities as do men, but it is very important that you know we know ourselves and we know what we want from life and we have the opportunity to create those choices for ourselves. And I think that the reason why I am here today is to encourage more women to work and for working mothers to join the workforce and for corporates and companies to welcome them, embrace them and have flexible policies so that we can include uh, this whole demographic into the workforce. Thank you.